Today we're going to be working on an iPad Pro 12.9 inch second gen. This one came in for no power. I plugged this in the amp meter and the amp meter is reading 0.47 amps charge. That's not normal. A normal rate for the iPad Pro is around 0.98 amps, 0.95 amps, but 0.47 amps, 0.48 amps draw is an indication that there is a short on the board. Now, how did I know that 0.47 is an indication that there's a short on the board? Experience. I've worked on those before, and every time we have a 0.47, 0.48 amps draw from the amp meter, it's almost always a short. So I already took the time to remove the screen, and I had to call the customer to let him know that prying the screen open, there's a risk that the screen can break. I do not touch this. I do not work on it if we do not get the okay from the customer. We never have issues uh, removing screens off iPads, but we always get the okay from the customer first. We tell the customer, the screen is glued. We have to heat up the screen and pry it. We are dealing with thin glass. There's a risk that the screen can break, especially if the screen has a weak point anywhere on the edges. It can crack and spiderweb. So we tell the customer that there is a risk involved. If you accept the risk, we can work on it. If you do not accept the risk that the screen can break, then we just ship it back to the customer. If we crack the screen and we did not get the approval from the customer to work on it, indicating that they accept the risk, then we are responsible for changing that screen. Just like when you go to a hospital, you have a surgery. Doctor tells you the success rate is 90%, but you still have to sign papers in case something happens to you and some other complications happen, then you have to be aware of the risks. Same thing with this one. What I did is remove the black shield here. I removed the plate that goes over the screen FEC connectors and disconnected the battery from the motherboard. We're going to connect the cable. I'm not going to power the cable on yet. I have the cable plugged into an amp meter, plugged into a power bank. So right now what I'm going to do is turn the thermal cam on. That's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to check the board under a thermal cam because I'm positive this is going to be a short. When it's a short on the board, I use a thermal cam. I do not do like others do. Some people, they feel the short with their face because the face is sensitive. Some people put their fingers and then they snap. Hot, hot. They want to show you how extreme the heat is on the board. And others put alcohol on the board and then they look and see where did alcohol evaporate? What area of the board did alcohol evaporate first? A lot of different methods. The easiest method would be to use a thermal cam. I know a lot of techs out there do not have a thermal cam or they do not want to invest in a thermal cam. The thermal cam just makes the job easier. And I only got this thermal cam when business picked up back in 2015 and I felt the need for it. Okay, so this is the board right here. Okay, look at this. This is the board right here. I'm going to power the board on and we're going to monitor to see what area on the board will get hot. One, two, three. Several areas. Several areas, okay? It's almost always not the big heat spot that is causing the short, but it's the small heat spot that is causing the short. How do I know this? From experience. I did not watch anybody using a thermal cam showing you where that short is coming from or what the heat spot means just from trial and error, trial and error. Working on iPads every day, I learned about how the board behaves under a thermal cam. What is normal and what is not normal. Based on my experience working on the 12.9 second gen board, it's almost always not the big heat spots that are causing the short, but rather the small one. So let's power the board on again. Look at this, the one on the right, right here, right here. This one right here. This is what's causing the short right here. For a person that would use alcohol to find the short, alcohol will evaporate from the big area here before it evaporates from here because this is a bigger heat spot than here. So alcohol is not going to work in this case. Putting the iPad on your face to feel heat is not going to work. Putting your finger to feel heat, you're going to feel heat up there and not heat on this component down on the bottom. The thermal cam is a priceless tool. Let's go under the thermal camera again. I'm going to turn the board on. And then I'm interested in this component right over here. Right over here. I have my tweezer over it. Thermal cam is pointing to this component. Unless I was not accurate in pointing to the component, then it could be any one of the nearby components here, one of those four. But 
I'm pretty sure I pointed to the right component. That's probably what is causing the short. And the short on this component is causing the big short on the coil above. So let's go ahead and remove this component. But before we remove it, let's test to see if, in fact, we do have a short on this area of the board. Grab our meter. I'm going to put it in diode mode, and then we can also test in resistance mode. But let's go to diode mode. Red probe on ground. And uh, we do have a short. We do have a short. Let me test in ohms mode. And the reading that I'm getting is 0 0.1 ohms, so that's uh, that short. Zero point two ohms. So we have a dead short here. We have a dead short here. Let's remove the component. What can we do to remove this component? We have to pull it off the board. It's in an extremely tight area, and we can barely hold that component with a tweezer. Look at this. It's very tight. It's very close to the chip here, and very close to its neighboring component. So if we use a lot of hot air to liquefy this component and remove it, we may end up knocking those components over and we're going to be in for a lot of work that we could have avoided. So right now what we have to do is pull on that component. Right there, look at this. The component is cracked. <laughs> look at this. The component is cracked in half. I just barely touched it and it broke in half. Glad I got it on camera. Okay. And remove the other half. And let's check and see if we still have a short. Meter in diode mode, red probe on ground. Okay, and we still have a short. Okay, so let's remove this one here. I'm gonna keep it on the side and let's see if we still have a short. And look at that, the short is gone. So this was the capacitor that was causing the short. My tweezer was pointing on this component. We removed it and it didn't release the short. So I thought maybe we have the tweezer on the wrong component because these components are so close to each other and they are microscopic. So you cannot exactly pinpoint on the component because of the size of those components. Then we proceeded to remove this one and we still had a short. I removed this one and the short is gone. Okay, so I'm gonna put this one back. This one was bad to begin with because you saw the way how it's split in half. So this one was bad to begin with. We probably had two bad components on here, this one and this one. These are bypass capacitors. Even if we do not have any of those capacitors put back, the tablet is going to function 100% and there is no harm, absolutely no harm. We have a lot of bypass capacitors around here. And uh, if you do not know what a bypass capacitor is, you can read more about it online. But right now, let's go ahead and test to see if the tablet will function. We do not have a short on the board anymore. Let me quickly test and see what amp reading we get. It should be in the 90s, 0 0.95, 0 0.97, 0 0.98. I'm gonna disconnect the separator between the battery and the motherboard. And we have a 0 0.96 amp charge rate, okay? Let me show it to you under the microscope. Okay, so look at that, the charge rate, 0 0.95. That's awesome. So right now the tablet is charging at 0 0.95 amps and that's normal. What is that? Oh, the tablet is on actually. <laughs> the tablet is on.
tablet is on. I do not have the screen connected, but it turned itself on. Let me disconnect. So that's a good indication that the tablet is working. Okay, I disconnected the battery. Let me remove the battery separator and we're gonna turn it on. iPad is on, okay? This was paperweight before. Paperweight, garbage. Now the tablet is working and this is a good tablet. It's a 12.9 second gen. The only thing about this tablet is if you break the screen, it's an expensive screen, the second gen. Tablet is working. Okay, so that's it for this video. I'm very happy that we were able to get this tablet working. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.